Hey everybody, it's Will here again. Hope everybody's doing well, and I'm really thrilled to get to bring you another guitar for an overview and demo as part of the 365 Days of Guitar series for 2020. Hope you dig. Today, we're having a look at this 2013 Danocaster Esquire style guitar, affectionately referred to as a Dano Squire. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with Danocaster, it's headed up by a lovely gentleman by the name of Dan Strain, as well as his wife, and I believe three other individuals, all based out of the Nashville area, that lovingly craft these beautiful recreations of classic Fender guitars. This particular model is a 2013 and is based on a mid 50s White Guard Fender Esquire. This particular one has an ash body, a one-piece maple neck with a lovely C neck profile. It's the larger of the two C profiles that he offers. It has the single ply white pit guard. It has a single Buds, B-U-D-Z, pickup here on the back. And you have volume and tone and a three-way toggle switch. To talk a little bit about the history of the Esquire, it's a pretty interesting uh, start for the Fender company. Uh, Leo Fender obviously came out with the first uh, solid body guitars for his line in the late 40s. And interestingly, the first guitar that was actually advertised in the Fender literature, as far as a solid body guitar that wasn't, you know, lap steel, you could get the Esquire. And it was either available in a single pickup or a two pickup model, but the name was just the Esquire. And it wasn't long after that that Leo decided to come out with the uh, broadcaster name for the two pickup guitar. But the Esquire retained the single pickup configuration and that name. And I believe Fender continued making the model up until around 1969, possibly 1970. And at that point, uh, the Esquire wasn't made until they started maybe reissuing them some years later, uh, probably into the 80s. So, yeah, the Esquire is a great guitar. There are a lot of great people that have played them over the years. A lot of fantastic blues artists, people like B.B. King. And one of the most noted musicians to play an Esquire that looked similar to this was the late, great Luther Perkins, who played with Johnny Cash. He played several Esquires, but the one he was most noted for was a mid-50s white guard example that looked very similar to this. Now, let's talk a little bit about what makes the Esquire special, because a lot of people would look at this and say, it's just a telly without a neck pickup. And in some ways that is true, but I've found that sonically and from a feel standpoint, Esquires are their own beast. There's a, there's more harmonic content to me and these guitars in some ways um, and also the the feel of them is a little bit slinkier than that of a standard Telecaster at least in my comparisons so you'll notice here single pickup and a three-way toggle switch so let's talk about what that does so when you have the switch in the center position you have the pickup routed to your volume and tone controls pretty standard when you go back here to what you would call your bridge position, it is the connected to the volume control, but the tone control is taken out of circuit. So the sound is brighter and more bold. Uh, again, that, that harmonic content, it really shines through in a great way in that position, particularly where the tone control is not affecting the circuit. And then the position up here, now traditionally the old Esquires had a capacitor that would Run, it would run the pickup through the capacitor, and it was a very muted, kind of a bass tone, um, very bass forward, almost trying to approximate maybe an acoustic guitar or something, or a jazz guitar of the time. But it was not a very popular sound, either on the Esquire or the Telecaster, and many players in later years would actually modify the guitars. And this guitar has one of the classic modifications that some people have done to Esquires, where the value of the capacitor in that position has been changed. And in this case, it's called the Eldred mod. I don't know the exact value of the capacitor, but essentially, instead of being a really bass forward tone, 
it pushes a certain section of the mid-range forward and almost sounds like you have a a crybaby wah or something on it, you know, like cocked wah sort of a sound. So in a lot of ways, I found that having this switch in a lot of ways is almost like having an onboard wah. You can go from the sort of cocked wah sound here, flick the switch back, and your tone is already at 10, so you get the brightness almost as if your wah wah was uh, pushed down as far as it can go on its brightest setting. But it's a wonderful sounding guitar, and I hope you enjoy hearing some sound samples of it. Once again, made by the lovely people at Danocaster. Another thing I should note is that this guitar is just featherweight. Uh, it's under six pounds, I believe, you know, about five, 5.7, 5 5.8 pounds. It, there's nothing to this guitar. And between that and the, the just the fantastic, comfortable C-shaped neck, it's, it's a guitar you can play for hours and hours and just never, never lose the magic. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen to the discussion portion of this, and I hope you enjoy the sound samples. Take care.